Today I want to talk about the frontal cortex and the way I'm going to do that is by presenting an argument about why I believe that younger people should not be able to drive and older people should not be able to drive. That is a very reductionist way of explaining my argument, but that's how I'm going to present it because that's what YouTube wants to hear. Now, I'm going to get into what I'm actually trying to argue, which is I don't actually think that people that have a frontal cortex that is not functional or that is not fully online yet should be driving cars. And here is why. So to understand what my argument is about, you kind of have to know what the frontal cortex is about. And I'm going to explain that in this video. So the frontal cortex is about regulating executive function. So it helps you say yes or no, allows you to do the action or to not do the action. Once all the stimuli have entered your head, and it is then the director, the one that says, I'm going to say yes, given all this information, or I'm going to say no, given all this information. How that would kind of look in your brain is your prefrontal cortex would say yes or no, given all the information, and that would send action potentials over to the rest of your frontal cortex. And then there would be more axonal projections that would then go out to your premotor cortex, and then more that would be going out to your motor cortex that would then tell your muscles to move and you would do the behavior. That's how it kind of kind of would look. Other functions of the frontal cortex are allowing you to do long-term planning and achieve your long-term goals. It helps you do that through reining in your emotions and telling them to relax a little bit. And then also saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to rein in my impulses. So Maybe there's a short-term desire or pleasure that I want. Well, I'm actually going to rein in on that because I see this long-term goal as something that's more important. It's also going to be really working when you are focusing in on something. So when you focus in on something, there are stuff that you have to not focus on. And it's going to help you zone in on targeting on one thing as opposed to looking at all these other things that are presented in front of you. So say I'm trying to focus in on a tree. To focus in on the tree, I have to just look at the tree and push shut down the other stimuli that are around it. That's kind of how I think about how the frontal cortex helps us um, focus in on things. Frontal cortex is also active in, its, in, our, in our working memory in our, in our day to day. Now, to sum up everything that I just said, the frontal cortex helps us do the hard thing when it's the right thing to do. Wow, that's pretty deep, huh? However you define the right thing, it's just, that's, that's the way you can think about it. I'm trying to do the right thing in my day. It doesn't, sometimes it's not really what I want to do in the short term, but I know it's the thing that I should do in the long term. If that's happening at every stage of the day, maybe you're hungry and you start to think to yourself, oh, I need to go get some food. But you remember to yourself, oh, I'm trying to cut. I'm not trying to enter a caloric surplus and get fat, right? Well, in that case, it's also going to be your frontal cortex that says to yourself, chill out, brother. Relax, man. You need, to, you need to inhibit those impulses because that all takes work. That all takes willpower. And with you using that willpower, that cognitive inhibition, you're telling yourself in your head, relax, man. We're going to do the right thing today. Um, using your frontal cortex, what's going to happen is there's a lot of energy that's being used to tell yourself to not do the things that make you deviate away from going on the right path of going on the journey to achieving the long-term goal that you set out for yourself. So here you can understand how the frontal cortex is very metabolically demanding, meaning that a lot of energy has to be used in your frontal cortex for you to be able to inhibit the urges and impulses that you have in the day so that you can function Effectively. What's interesting about this frontal cortex is really how important it is in being a huge social factor in how we live our lives. In our brains, we actually have a lot of the same components that a lot of other animals have. With similar neurons, so like the Drosophila melangastra, the fruit fly, has neurons that are basically the same as ours, and that's why we use them in a lot of our uh, um, neuroscientific studies. We have similar neurotransmitters, we have similar chemicals that all the other, all the other animals in our on our planet have because well we've all been evolved on the same planet so a lot of the components are the same the difference between those joseph and melangaster that have similar neurons to us is one we have a much more complex brain with many more different components and many uh 
more neurons than they do. And then in addition to that, there's a special type of neuron that we have that's called the von Economo neuron, the spindle neuron. These von Economo neurons can also be found in some other social animals like primates, whales, dolphins. In us, in our brains, we happen to have more than those animals do. In our brains, in our insular cortex, in our anterior cingulate cortex, in the last video we said that the insula helps in identifying disgust, um, both in actual gustatory taste disgust, but also in moral disgust by talking to our amygdala. In doing that, it helps us by saying, okay, I actually don't want to be part of that group because it's not really what I want to be part of. Um, I really have other moral ethics that I want to be a, a part of, right? Anyway, and then we also have another center of our brain called the ACC or the anterior cingulate cortex that has the role of, to sum it up, empathy, right? Of understanding how we fit in the rest of the world, helping us understand how other people feel. It's all those things together that help us understand that the frontal cortex has a huge role in our social complexity. And these von Economo neurons have a huge role in our social complexity. So what happens when you get rid of the frontal cortex? There's this guy named Phineas Gage, who I think it was 18, 18 something, right? This guy was working on a, a railroad. Something exploded and it had a 13 foot iron cylinder that went through his eye, out his left frontal lobe, took out his left frontal lobe, and this guy was now a totally different guy. He was unable to rein in his impulses. He was, a lot, he was a lot more impulsive. Whenever he was in a social situation, he would use a lot more vulgar language than he would normally use. He was unable to rein in his emotions. If he got angry, he would get angry. There was no, there was no reining in that anger. There was no saying, okay, wait, actually, dude, relax, like, chill out, man. And him, there would be anger if he felt it. And it rendered him kind of dysfunctional in a society that is really built on that. A lot of our lives are built on being social creatures. We have to work with other people. And that's how that's how we that's how we achieve the goals that we want to achieve. If we want to be great at anything, we have to be great communicators. That's I believe that is fundamental to what makes us human. Let's go back to the general argument, which is people that have dysfunctional frontal cortices or frontal cortices that are not fully online yet should not be driving. Any younger individuals and people who have not hit their mid twenties yet, their frontal cortices are not on fully online yet. They're not fully developed yet. That means that people that are below those mid twenties are more likely to do more impulsive things and are less capable of reining in their emotions they're unable to focus as well because of that if they're put in a driver's seat well they're driving that car and this young person is really not able to rein in on their emotions and they start chasing that guy on the, on the road and then i don't know some some really tragic thing happens and they get t-boned and bam they die or they kill someone else well in this case we have a really bad situation where we have a dead dude and this is a huge reason why I don't think that younger people should be able to drive. Their bodies may, might be fully online. They might have a fully developed uh, body that's fully functional. In that respect, I can understand why you would think that a younger person should be able to drive. Maybe they need to get to new places, right? Maybe they have a training that they need to, need to get to and they need to drive there. Um, maybe they have a new job that's really important to them that'll help them further their career and they need to drive there. And so. From that respect, I understand. But then one could say that there are many other ways of transport, of, of getting transport to get over to those places they need to go to, whether it be a, a bike, a bus, uh, electric scooter, electric bike, um, a, <laughs> name, name, name what you want, right? There are many different ways of forms of transport that they can use to get there. But then you could say to me, well, who's to say that them do, driving, uh, being on those vehicles is not also dangerous. Well, I'd say it's a lot less dangerous than being on a vehicle that's capable of destroying a lot more, of, of outputting more power and uh, covering up more space and thus providing more potential damage to the things that it interacts with. In people that are starting to have deficiencies in their frontal cort cortices, so as you get older, you're past the mid-20s and now you're entering your 40s, 50s, 
and around the 60s, you start, you start to become more impulsive. You start to not be able to hold back your tongue. You start to tell that kid he's a little, a little, he's a little chunky. He's got to kind of hit the gym. Um, whereas before you weren't doing that. And what we find here is that individuals that are unable to rein in their impulses have more of those von Economo neurons, those spindle neurons that are starting to die off. And this is what we call FTD or frontotemporal uh, dementia. And as this becomes more and more severe, as a person gets older and older and older, well, we got a real issue here because now you got these people driving. The other problem is that, remember, that part of the frontal cortex's rule is to tone down the other emotions that you have and, and tell them to kind of relax. And so if you think about it that way, when the individual, when the older individual who already has probably arthritis, has other physical issues with their body, maybe they have a hurt hip or a hurt knee, hurt ankle, whatever it is, their back hurts, all of these things are weighing in on their frontal cortex throughout the day. But all this pain, all this chronic pain, all this pain that's uh, accumulated over their lifetime is now more weight that's on their frontal cortex. As you can imagine, it makes it harder for them to do the right thing when it's the right thing to do. It makes it harder for them to say, okay, I'm not gonna be as angry in this moment. And so, along with the death of those um, monoconomal neurons, there's also a lot of pain that they have to deal with that's more than what the younger individual, or people who still don't have a developed frontal cortex uh, below their mid-20s have. And so, here you have both pain and death of those von Economo spindle neurons that leads to what you can imagine is, I've, I've had quite a few friends who have been hit by, including myself, who have been hit while riding a bike within the area of where I was supposed to ride the bike by older individuals. This may in part be through, through their focus, through their inability to say, I'm not gonna focus on those things, I'm gonna focus on the road at hand, the road that I'm on right now. And I'm sure that you've noticed that there are people that you know who are of an older age who when driving will experience this road rage who will get really angry for no reason uh, or maybe they'll get angry but it's not and, and maybe it's for a viable reason but it's not so viable that you think the anger and the rage that they're demonstrating is the reaction that should be elicited in this situation all of these things combined lead to my conclusion kind of how i think about why younger and older people should not be driving because their frontal cortex is not fully online and not fully working. If you agree with this, let me know in the comment section below. If you disagree with this, let me know in the comment section below. I understand that all these people have different requirements and um, when I say requirements, I mean obligations that they have to attend to So and goals that they have to attend to and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and try and achieve. Um, let's say you're a younger person, you're trying to become a professional footballer. You have to get to your trainings that are really far away, so you have to get a license so you can drive there because your parents don't want to bring you there uh, or don't have the time to bring you there. Uh, or if you're an older individual, you don't want to be totally shut out from society, so you want to drive over to the cafe where your friends are, or the bookstore where your friends are, the library where your friends are, the social club where your friends are. All that being said, I do think there are other solutions to individuals who have a frontal cortex that isn't fully online yet or hasn't or is uh, starting to deteriorate I think there are other options for you to get around a city yes they may be more difficult and yes knowing the the, the role of the frontal cortex is doing the hard thing when it's the right thing to do I don't think that any of these individuals will be happy in having to do a more tedious task but I do think this would be a rational <laughs> way of handling things. But the frontal cortex also has a, is very active in, in, in things like lying, um, a complex social behavior where you're inhibiting your initial thought so you can say something else. And there's a lot of other things the frontal cortex is involved in. But I hope that my example here of saying that I don't think that people who don't have a fully developed frontal cortex or a frontal cortex that is starting to deteriorate should be driving, kind of makes sense, and has helped you understand how the frontal cortex works. If it has, I hope you subscribe and I hope you share this video if you enjoyed it. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, 
please comment below. I'd love to make another video arguing against what some other thing that you're talking about. But what I think the next video is going to be about is probably the, the ventral medial uh, prefrontal cortex and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So stay tuned for that. Peace.